Now, there's there's a lot of talk about how to do case annealing. Um, people stand the cases up in um, in a bath of water and uh, heat them with a blowtorch and knock them over after a period of time. I don't think that's particularly a successful or good way to go about it. Um, other people hold it in a socket and hold a flame on it and do a kind of verbal count. But um, what I've found certainly is that with a small case such as this, uh, you need to be a little bit more precise in um, how to measure your timing and be consistent with your timing and be consistent with the uh, flame on the neck. So um, I looked at uh, bought annealers, I looked at the bench source annealers and things like this and they were all kind of out of my price range. So I've um, I actually built my own and this is my own annealer uh, and I built it along with uh, help uh, with a guy from another forum, one of the shooting forums, um, and so we've sort of done this together. Uh, both of them, they're very similar, they, um, the two designs differ very slightly. So just to go over some finer points of uh, this little annealer, um, it's got, uh, there's an adjustable for height uh, here uh, on two thumb wheels, uh, it will adjust for everything from uh, one seven squirrel all the way up to 270 and probably larger. Um, there is a central disc and it has two sizes of cutouts in it. Uh, the smaller cutout will handle everything up to 223 uh, and the larger cutout will handle everything up to sort of 308 and uh, possibly larger. And if you need or if I never need a larger uh, caliber disc I can just make the holes larger or design, make another disc, design another disc with larger holes in. Um, it also has um, a digital readout so that you can uh, see exactly the time that you're annealing for. That's controlled with a potentiometer and the potentiometer and the way that there's a little bit of a computer underneath and that controls the motor for the drive and the potentiometer does everything in quarter second increments. So everything from uh, zero seconds all the way up to 10 seconds. And I found that's enough with a standard blue propane uh, torch, certainly for the cases I'm doing. Uh, if you wanted a slightly faster time, you could use map gas. Um, and then, you know, you, this, this gives you the flexibility to adjust for very, very short dwell times under the flame. So you can, you can, like I said, you can put it down to everything from quarter second all the way up to 10 second in quarter second increments. Um, the disc, if you're swip, swap, swapping between calibers, you just rotate the disc to the next position, uh, undo the thumb screw in the middle. Uh, there's a small readjustment that has to be made. The disc actually floats on three bearings. So there's a small readjustment that has to be made to the disc um, so you undo the thumb screw, make the adjustment, do the thumb screw up and then it will index on the correct hole. I've set this up now for um, the smaller hole for 17 Hornet. So I'll just move that round to the start point. Lock it off. And you see indexes to the start point underneath this, the, uh, the the case annealer point sorry, is a small motor that rotates the case in front of the flame so you only need one torch uh, and that rotates at one rotation per second so it's a fairly even and consistent temperature I'll turn that off for a minute because it's a bit noisy um, also uh, see people kind of giving various advice with the temp uh, with the how to gauge the temperature and to look for color changes and you know it glows dull orange or dull red and i don't think that that's a particularly um consistent or precise way to judge temperature so i would say that if you're going to be doing annealing you want to invest in some tempolac uh, and you need two types um from the research from the Girard type annealer, they recommend 750 for the neck and 425 for the body. I couldn't actually get any 425, so I've got 450 uh, for the body and head. And the idea, and some thinners as well, sorry. You need some thinners because the Temple Act tends to dry out quite easily if, um, 
if you leave the lid off and it's quite expensive so you want to kind of maintain its the uh, you know the, its liquid state um so there's a few th people also talk about where to apply the templac uh, and there's advice saying you know put the 750 on the outside of the case neck uh and the 4 425 or 450 down the body um the that's kind of correct the you shouldn't actually if you what, what you're looking for is for the for the the Templac, which is a coloured paint, to change colour. It goes clear when it's at the right temperature. Um, so what you should actually do is introduce it, uh, let's see, introduce it to the case, inside the case neck. So you put a little coating inside the case neck. Um, and then what I do is two, just so I can see the change in colour, is two little dots on the outside of the neck and four dots down the body. And this will be the this will be the indicator to tell you how far the heat has travelled down. And you don't want um, the the colour change in the white dots, the four two five or four fifty dots, to be any more than half the case length. You don't want that head wicking down. You don't want that heat wicking down toward the head because um, that's going to ruin your brass. You can't. It'll be too soft. So the idea is just to anneal the neck and shoulder area prior to fire forming. So now I can see that the flame isn't quite in the right position so I'm just going to adjust it a bit further out and look for the colour change on the case. Let's turn that off. What happens is there's a, a change of colour inside the neck, it'll go clear. On Inside the neck the, the green paint will go clear. The two dots will change colour but as you see in the flame they go black so that's not really very handy um, but we're more concerned about what's going on in the body and you can see the lower two dots are intact um, so the heat hasn't got above 450 anywhere near the case head so I'd say seven seconds is about right now this is cool enough. So I'm going to set this up now for the other cases and uh, get ready to anneal them. Okay so we've got it all set up and loaded. Uh, we're going to anneal 100 cases. I'll obviously speed this film up so you're not having to sit through watching me do 100 cases. Um, one thing to notice is when you haven't got the paint in you can actually look uh, and see because you've already tried, the, you've already tested with the paint to make sure that the temperature is correct. But you can now actually look at the case neck when it's going through the flame and watch uh, a discoloration, uh, a sort of grey blue move down the neck of the case over the shoulder area, area um, onto the case body. And it should stop about five millimetres underneath that by a uh, false shoulder that you've created. So um, we'll start it up and anneal some brass. Program starting up and we're off. So I'm looking here to see the colour change. It kind of goes a very goldy colour as the heat travels down the case neck. Um, and then you can see a sort of ring form underneath the false shoulder. Obviously, you won't see that on the video, but um, it tells me that these cases are being properly annealed uh, and shouldn't split when fire formed. And uh, that's the crucial bit, really. Uh, and that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a, uh, a softened brass that you can fire form without any neck splits or shoulder splits. Now you also notice when the heat is about, when the, when the temperature is about correct, there's a slight colour change in the flame as well. Um, I believe that's uh, a little bit of the zinc burning off, um, which is why obviously manufacturers prefer to use something like an induction heat method which doesn't cause that sort of uh, change in the metals, that burning up of the metals. But uh, I looked at building an induction annealer and it's, it's reasonably straightforward. 
Um, but arguably, you know, the, for, for the cost of these cases and for how often they're going to be fired, probably not worth the extra expense in building one of those. I'm looking at the cases in the tray, they're dropping into the tray beneath, um, and I can see uh, the slight sort of blue-grey blue -gray ring that's formed uh, just underneath the false shoulder. So I know that these are going to be fine when I come to fire form, they're going to be absolutely spot on and I won't have any splits. On the subject of splitting as well, what can also sometimes cause that when you're fire forming the grass is a load that's slightly too hot. So I, I'm using N1 Vitabori N120 powder and uh, what I found was uh, if I used the start start load for that recommended start load is 9.8 grains. Now 9.8 grains gives me 3,000 feet per second, which is pretty slow for 1.7 Hornet. Um, still faster than the equivalent uh, weight in 1.7 HMR, but um, I, I tried using 10 grains of powder, uh, and that gave me 3,200 feet per second. But I did get the occasional neck split even after annealing so that kind of showed me that um, for the purposes of fire forming because you're asking this little case to do quite a bit you're asking it uh, to expand outwards you're asking the uh, shoulder to form the neck to be pulled back uh, it was just too much um, for the case uh, it was too much pressure for that case so scaling back to the start load of 9.8 grams meant that I could successfully fire form and not lose any cases uh, which is quite important when you consider the work that's gone into making these. So that's us, we're almost at 50 cases and you can see how quick it is to do 50 cases. Um, almost no time at all. It actually probably takes longer to set up the annealer uh, and, and get the temperature settings correct than it does to uh, actually anneal, anneal the glass itself. So. And just to double check, I'm going to pop another case on that has a little bit of the temperature indicator on to make sure that um, there isn't excessive heat travelling down to the case head. Uh, nothing's changed. Another point is, uh, some people think you have to quench these, they have to drop into water to quench them. That's, um, that's not right either, there's nothing to be gained from quenching brass. It isn't steel, you don't um, change any of the properties of it by uh, letting it cool quickly or slowly. Um, the results are always the same. So this is the indicator case. And that's absolutely fine. Still really a little too warm to hold com uh, too warm to hold comfortably, but you can see the lower half of the case hasn't changed colour, so it hasn't got above for 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I've made a few of these uh, case annealers for friends and things so far. Uh, they're quite quite easy to make. Um, uh, there's relatively few components uh, and I have all the parts, most of the parts uh, either laser cut or water jet cut um, from some plans that I've already drawn up. The hardest bit was actually getting the code made for the, the timer itself um, to give those quarter second increments. Uh, and there, that's accurate to within uh, 2 milliseconds. Ok, so there's not many cases to go now, we're almost done. But um, nearly 100 cases done in uh, about 10 minutes, uh, which is very easy, very consistent, very reliable.